Hello, it's Rana from Curly's Clay Creations. And today my project is to upgrade my bird feeder. I made this a couple summers ago and there's a backstory behind this that I'm absolutely shocked that this thing survived. So this was built, let me get the background, background. So I love thrift store shopping and I love vintage malls and all sorts of things. So I came across this at one of the vintage malls that I stopped at and it's a crocheted butterfly and I fell in love. I was like, I couldn't believe I found this. So uh, one of the first things I made was um, just a plain bowl that I had gifted to somebody, somebody had purchased for their daughter. And the next one, what I, the second thing I made was this bird feeder that I kept for myself. Uh, so the reason I say upgrade is First of all, when I was making this, I didn't realize that I made it larger than what my kiln would fit. So it was literally like an inch larger than my kiln. Um, now, after two firings and a glaze firing, it could fit perfectly in my gla uh, in my kiln. Um, I actually had to fire this on like a 90 degree angle both times. What I did is I set, I set like a shelf stilts on like a lower part here and then a center part holding this part right here so it doesn't it wouldn't like sort of slope in or something like that with during the firing and then also a couple up here to hold this side so I literally fired it like this both firings and when it came out of the glaze firing I'm telling you my heart was racing I could not believe that this thing survived fired on its side so that's what I'm going to upgrade this on. I'm going to try to well I have to make sure that it fits in my kiln so I'll sort of lift up the wings a little bit more to bring in the length of it so that's what I'll do for that and then also since I've already used this and I know the pros and cons of it sort of that's why I know I can upgrade and fix the things that I that went wrong trial and error you know so I noticed that there isn't really somewhere for birds to like perch on that's close to the seeds over here like I have a leaf bird feeder also hanging outside and that sits a little bit lower and birds can sort of like sit on that ledge or hold on to that ledge over here and then eat but this is like too far for them so what I'm thinking is even just as simple like some of them sit here and eat but as simple as I think I'm going to instead of using the antennas as indentations over here I'm going to actually make them 3d and probably like a little style like that out of clay like a rope style so that the bird can actually have something to sort of like grab its little claws and hold on to while it's eating so that's what I'm going to do there and then also another thing which probably saved it because it wasn't flat on the bottom so the bowl that I had draped it in didn't give me a flat bottom so I think actually firing it on its angle probably was better for it because if I tried to fire it like this I think it would have cracked in the middle because the bottom wasn't completely flattened so to fix that this time around this is the bowl that I had originally uh, laid my slab in and the bottom is not flat so I'm like I went around looking throughout the house today for something flat and sturdy so I can set at the bottom of this bowl so that I can have a flat bottom so that way I can actually fire it on a kiln shelf flat and I won't have to worry about it warping and breaking in half which unfortunately during my last move uh, this did break so it did crack in half uh, luckily uh, well what what so I did try once before the e6000 it works on some things. I'm telling you, this thing was amazing. I just grabbed this from outside. We are in like 12 degrees here in Michigan and uh, we woke up to snow today and this was filled with ice and snow. Uh, so it's survived being outside in the past couple months with cold weather and ice built up in it. Uh, and it survived with me using the Gorilla epoxy glue. It's a two part epoxy and it's, if it survived that, that's pretty sturdy. So I'm shocked to see that uh, this glue really held up to what it was supposed to do. So 
that's what I'm gonna be making today. I'm gonna be replicating. So that's my plan. So I will walk you through it's an easy to do project. Um, I'll show you what I do to sort of protect the sides, the edges from cracking and whatnot. So I'll just get started. I'll roll up my slab and then start up the video again. Okay, so I rolled out my clay and I've compressed it uh, to fit my crocheted butterfly. that flat as flat as I can give me enough of a, an edge so I can trim around the butterfly did roll this out on my uh, slab roller um, thick because my slab roller is not as wide as I needed it so after I had rolled it out um, thick enough to fit the butterfly it came to be a little bit over an eighth of an inch thick uh, that is a little bit probably thicker than what I'm used to but I think it'll be okay so we'll see how that works so now to cut around the butterfly, I try to avoid sharp um, like corner edges. I like to try to keep everything round to keep it from cracking. So I didn't roll these in, but I want to also make sure that I incorporate them in the slab so I don't want to cut out too much to, uh, to you know, too short of a area for the ant uh, antenna. So, I'm gonna go ahead and cut around the design, uh, allowing myself some space around it, so.
Just gonna smooth out the edges just a little bit, sort of compressing also the edges into the form. So I'm going to just make sure I know the width of my kiln. So the kiln is fit safely 17 inches. So the butterfly's wide, widest, widest, rewind, widest width is um tw almost 21 inches so obviously i gotta curl that up to lose four inches to be able to fit in the kiln so this is what i'm going to do i don't usually i'll just dust this so that the clay doesn't stick to it and then plus the clay shrinks and it will lift slightly when it's ready to come out so i dust that with some cornstarch and I go for it. Now I know it's not going to fit perfectly, so I like to sit it in like this. And I got my bowl of sponges ready so that I can place them where I need them. And as I slowly push in the center. I'll add sponges to sort of like help me hold some areas up. Oh, I like the idea of that little metal round part down there. That makes a big difference. I can already tell. I think I did it. That was quick. That is 17 inches, I think, at the widest. Let's see. 17 inches. Woohoo! And that's when I can dry a little bit 
to get ready for, but it's gonna, it's still green more, so that's probably gonna shrink another little bit and even make that fit a little bit more comfortable. I'll probably still adjust it a little bit more since the cushion of the sponges will probably go down a little bit. I'll start shoving in some more, um, probably rags and stuff to lift the edges up a little. But I like that. And I'm going to do this before I forget, like I did last time, to stamp my initials somewhere. So I'll just do that right there on the wing since I already forgot. All right, perfect. So now the problem with this, not the problem actually, what I always fear is the edges cracking. So I rounded them pretty well, but what I usually do is um, I brush some wax resist on them. Even if I do put them in, a, I am going to put this in my little greenhouse so that it dries slowly, but I'm telling you, it's always a problem where it starts to crack here. So the wax resist really does help with that. But look at that. Oh, I love it. I just can't wait. So, like I said, I'm going to put 3D antlers, antlers, <laughs> antennas, antlers. That would be cool. That would actually be pretty interesting, interesting creature. But I'll put the uh, roped coils over here once that's ready. But I'm going to go ahead and peel this off for the reveal because I think it's absolutely beautiful. inches there. So I'll probably have to lift that up a little bit like that. And of course, anyone who works with clay knows that everything becomes a propping tool, right? I think that will work. So I will wait now to bisque this and I will probably end up filming another video on me glazing it and uh, putting, putting it together, I guess, with the finishing piece. Uh, so let's see. I still have to get my kiln hooked up. I'm waiting for my brother to actually, he's my electrical engineer. He's the electrical engineer for the entire family. 
so he, I'm waiting for him to put my kiln together. Uh, hopefully he said he'll be in, in a couple days to do that. This will be probably another couple weeks before it dries. Uh, I will be drying this very slowly. And like I said, I'll film another video of me glazing it. Uh, I know a lot of people like to see like YouTube videos, one set video where it's start to finish, but unfortunately I have a daytime job. I got a dog. I don't have time to sit and edit all my videos like that right now. So I can give you what I have. And as I make, I'll post and just look forward to the next video. And um, I know YouTube allows to post pictures too. So I'll always post the updated photos and if you want more information about the pieces I make, follow me on my Facebook page. It's Curly's Clay Creations. Um, you are here on YouTube, uh, Curly Rana. I do have an Instagram, also Curly's Clay Creations. Um, I do have some uh, couple large groups in Facebook, uh, Facebook pages or groups. One of them is for ceramic hand builders, which is something like this, not wheel thrown. Um, so that's a ceramic hand builders unite Facebook group. Um, it's a good group. It's a good forum. A lot of information you can learn from there. And then also I do, I am the admin of Pottery Heads Uncensored, which is a ceramics group that as long as it has anything to do with clay, uh, you can post all your clay work, censored, uncensored, everything goes. Um, so that's a cool page to also join if you're interested. Also, if you like this channel, if you like this video, subscribe and I'll keep you posted with more. Thank you.